had a good start to the week in school. Um, thank you for giving up your time as well to attend tonight's webinar. Uh, we've made a number of key changes to the format of schools hockey this year, and we look forward to presenting those to you tonight. So um, we'll get started. So uh, welcome. Um, just do a quick introduction. Uh, my name's Steve Thomas. Uh, I'm the new schools and community manager for, for Hockey Wales. Um, and I've also got my colleague on the call, Amanda Roberts, who's going to man the chat function for us, as well as uh, come into the presentation sort of at the halfway point to outline some of the key changes we made to secondary school uh, hockey. Um, in terms of housekeeping tonight, in terms of technical issues, if you do encounter any problems your end, then simply log out and log back in using the same details you had initially to sign up to this webinar. You will be um, kept on mute just to avoid any sort of noise turbulence and crossover on camera. And like I mentioned earlier on, if you want to keep your camera on, you're welcome to. If not, then absolutely fine uh, um, as well as. In terms of the agenda tonight, we're going to mix. It's going to be a mix of primary and secondary school information. So not everything I'm conscious will be tailored to, to, way, to, to, to you and your settings. Because I think we've got a mixed bag of teachers from, from different settings on the call. But in terms of asking questions, we do want it to be still interactive, even though you will be kept on mute. So use the chat function um, for that. So I'm just going to send everybody in the group, uh, if I can, a quick sort of hello message. I'm conscious that everyone uh, may have been on Zoom and conducted a training over, over, the, over these means before. So hopefully you've just received my message in there. At any point you want to ask a question, then, then feel free. And what we're going to do is I'm conscious that everyone will have their own personal questions related to their own counties, their own schools. We're going to formulate a, um, an FAQ document, which will be shared with everyone who's on the call tonight and also uploaded onto our website to answer everybody's questions, because I'm sure your questions will, will match that, that of others. So uh, that's what we're looking to do. And then, like I mentioned before, we are going to record tonight's link because there's multiple teachers who've emailed me to say they can't make it. So we just want to make it really accessible so everybody who's not on the call tonight can access it at a later date. So in terms of the agenda, um, you may have seen this uh, from the local authority emails which have been sent out. So we're going to outline our plans around the World Cup qualifiers in, in this uh, webinar. So that's taking place for the men in Cardiff uh, at the end of this month. And our women's team are out in Italy um, for their World Cup qualifiers. So we're doing some school engagement stuff around that. We were looking at developing a teacher um, course and resource ahead of the health and well-being launch next, uh, next September. And we're really keen on, on developing like a steering group to make that happen. You're the experts, you're the teachers, you're on the ground delivering sort of P in school sports. So we want to hear some of your thoughts and ideas and feedback around that. So we'll explain what we're looking to do with that. We committed to doing and commissioned a survey pre-COVID with our secondary schools around um, putting them first, putting hockey first in those settings pre-COVID. And we, we've collated the results now and given our response. So we'll outline that on this call. We've also got a brand new festival and competition format which again, we'll, we'll have dates for you on this call today of when those will be taking place in your respective counties. And then lastly, um, we've got a brand new Hooked on Hockey package, which um, is, is a virtual and a face-to-face -face package, which hopefully some of the schools will be interested in and will we'll sign up to ahead of their festivals, which will take place next year. So that's the agenda. So the first thing I'm going to cover, guys, is the World Cup qualifiers. It's the most pressing um, sort of thing within, within Welsh hockey at the moment. And, and because we're hosting it as a, as a host nation, very prestigious event and we're very grateful to be given the opportunity. We want to make sure that the schools that we work with and pupils that are playing the game are exposed to it and certainly inspired by it. So what we're looking to do and what we have done is um, tomorrow your local authority will hopefully be sending the, the following pack out. So we've created a virtual schools pack to promote the, the World Cup qualifiers for both men and women and it's in bilingual format. So within the pack you'll receive a quiz, a fact sheet and a fixture wall chart which will be linked to um, all the nations taking part, the players, the coaches, et cetera. And it's, it's quite holistic in the fact it's not just tailored to hockey. There's a lot of information there about the actual geography, where these nations are from and, um, and things like that. We also want schools on the 21st of October to wear red for Wales, because that is the day our men's and women's team play their first games against Italy. So because we're hosting it and we want obviously Wales to do well, we're hoping to inspire some of the kids to play the game on that day. And if you can commit to do that, then we'd, we'd really appreciate it. And that could be deliver a school assembly. It could be deliver some hockey on the playground within a P lesson or an extracurricular club. I could potentially look to engage your local club within that delivery or even touch base with some young ambassadors who will be win within your local secondary school. So if you do anything around that, let us know about it on our social media pages. And likewise, if you do want to attend the event, certainly it may be more accessible to the, to the schools based in the south. We have got designated tickets and offers and we also got live stream links as well if you can't commit to getting there. So 
We'll also be promoting a lot of that stuff uh, in the build up. And again, um, all of the web, all the resources for that, like I said before, will be sent out tomorrow, along with a webinar link to share, you know, as, as, as you please. And those resources will also be accessible from our website page as well. And I'll explain at the end how you can get those. So really good resources, really well designed. Hopefully you'll use them and promote hockey within your school. In addition to that, um, again, it might be more targeted at the Southern schools, but uh, on Sunday, we're hosting a hockey taster session with two of our Olympic bronze medalists, Sarah and Leah. Um, we've got 20 spaces available. It's a golden opportunity for some kids to be coached by, by our Olympians. And that's taking place at Sophia Gardens between nine and 10. We have 20 spaces available. We need to fill them as soon as possible. So if you have got any kids interested who play or just want to be given the opportunity to, to meet these guys, then, then certainly um, share, that, um, share that opportunity with them. And again, email me if you're interested and I can allocate them spaces accordingly, but it will be on a first come first serve. So again, that message will be promoted to certainly um, some of the Southern schools tomorrow, um, but certainly you know, any Northern schools as well who are interested or pupils willing to travel, that also is, is there for you as well. So that's basically the World Cup covered. So the next thing we're going to look at, just in brief on one slide, is the new health and wellbeing curriculum, which kicks in next year. So what we'd like to do um, is create a bespoke teacher training course and resource to support your delivery in schools. I'm conscious currently our offer is to train you up on a 4689 coaching course, which is tailored more towards, you know, club coaches, really. So I'm really being new to this role, would like to implement something which is a bit more teacher related and how you plan, deliver, assess against a curriculum. Um, in terms of when you deliver hockey. So um, we're looking to embed hockey within the new sort of area of learning expertise. And what we'd like to do is create a content which is a bit more bespoke and relevant to you delivering on the ground in schools. So we're looking to bring together a cohort of early years, primary, secondary uh, teachers to come together with our own coach developers to create this sort of new course and resource. So if anybody on the call is interested in that, and even I know there might be some sports developers on, off on here as well. Again, if, if you are as well, it's not exclusive to teachers. I'd be really interested in working with you. It doesn't matter whether you're from a, you know, a hockey playing background or coaching background. It could be that you're just new to teaching, you've been assigned the role of a, a PE lead and you just want to embed hockey within it. And, and also thinking about the new curriculum, certainly you know, reach out and, and get involved because I'd be really interested to speak to people, particularly as well in the early years settings because we don't really currently do much in relation to that offer there. Steve, can I just stop you a sec? Lucy, yep. uh, Lucy Smith, sorry, because Lucy, the other Lucy's message. Lucy Smith, does that answer your question around hockey resources for Key Stage 2? So we're looking to produce more for schools at the moment. Yeah, and, and it won't be just for the World Cup, Lucy. I'll explain later on how we're going to do put push regular content out on our new schools corner on the website. So this will be the first of many. Uh, because it's quite prestigious, this is the, the thing that we want to launch first. So absolutely. So uh, this is more for secondary schools now. So I mentioned before, you know, pre-COVID, we put out a survey to see what is the current picture of hockey in secondary schools? And, and what we'd like to do is share some of our findings and also our response to that. And again, we'll have a couple of slides on this. So it was commissioned to understand what issues sort of exist within secondary schools. We know there are any, there are many. Um, so you can see on the screen there how many schools did engage in terms of students and teachers in the survey, which was, was quite extensive. Um, feedback indicated there was many issues around pupils not playing and certainly a drop off in, in club participation. And we're conscious that we don't currently have really any sort of broad initiative that, that target secondary school participation. So there's a clear need for intervention. And this is why we're putting some plans in place through this webinar to try and action that tonight. So in terms of the headline data for four secondary schools, quarter of secondary schools now no longer play hockey, which is obviously as an NGB is a real concern. There's obviously been a steady decline within that from probably when I was in school and many people on the call. So there's multiple reasons for that which we're aware of, but we want to try and, try and reverse that trend and get hockey back on the menu of secondary school sports. So although many don't play it, many stages two is that they'd like to try it. Um, and what we have seen is that participation trends from sort of as pupils progress through secondary school get certainly declined. So from year, in year seven, they're pretty high because in primary school, they probably had a positive experience, played lots of it. And when they reach high school, we're seeing this decline as it progress through the year group. So there's certainly, um, certainly um, an actual disparity as well between boys and girls. We see a lot more girls play hockey than boys across all the year groups, which again is, is, a, is a concern. And then what we're seeing is a lot of um, schools want lots more fixtures. Not many schools or pupils potentially get given the opportunity in that way because there's not enough opportunity for them. It could be because schools have to be quite selective when they're picking teams for events. Um, 
as well as you know multiple other issues which we'll, we'll raise in the next slide around some barriers but but nevertheless when they have attended competitions they've had a positive experience and where we probably fall short is that if hockey's not delivered by the teacher it probably doesn't get delivered at all so it's our responsibility to try and engage local clubs um in, into some of the delivery of within your curriculum and also try and promote our sort of training offer to your young ambassadors sport leaders in your school to ensure that the burden's not left purely on the teachers also widespread across all, all the other staff uh, within the school. So what can we do to break some of these barriers? So within the survey, it was mentioned, you know, a lack of interest with a lack of players, potentially lack of practice because maybe there's no extra, extra, extracurricular activity taking place. Maybe certain schools have attended events and they told us this have felt that haven't been able to be competitive because they're playing against schools and maybe play a lot of it. And maybe they've got a, low, a more local club link where kids play a lot more of it. And as a result, maybe they haven't had a positive experience. And, and the other things which we're aware of is maybe transport's been, a, been an issue. That could be just purely cost of location. Equipment could be an issue, maybe because they have a lack of it, or maybe the equipment they're using is, is many years old. Or maybe facilities, a lot of schools now, 21st century schools, have no longer AstroTurf pitches and got 4G, 3G. So that's also a barrier to our sport because it's, it's more difficult then to, to present hockey on that particular service. So um, to overcome these, um, teachers and secondary schools told us that they want to know more about when festivals competitions are. There's probably been a lack of sort of communication, I guess, over the years. Maybe they've missed um, festivals and competition dates or maybe they've been told relatively last minute and maybe you've missed the cutoff of being able to arrange those things. They want competitions with less rules, an opportunity to mix teams together. That may be because, that maybe they, because they're struggling for numbers by mixing that those, those age groups and genders together. They can then you know, raise a team. And also they want it to be more localised, so you know, reduce the, the sort of travel time be able to play hockey all year round because I think consciously before it's probably been used as a summer sport whereby if you can play it winter indoors, then that, that can take place all year round. And I think some of the other things that have been mentioned is that you know, we want to have closer um, club links. So where clubs do exist within Wales, try and match them up to local local clubs, uh, lo local schools. Where they don't exist, it's a case of can we then put provision within the school through young leaders or through teacher support or through club, through club support to make that happen, even if they are sort of like satellite sessions. And then lastly, teachers have told us, and I think, um, you know, in, in obviously secondary schools, we've got specialists, um, but certainly in primary schools, more training, more resource, certainly linked to hockey, so they're able to deliver it to a more uh, competent level. So these are things we're thinking now in the early years, primary and secondary school settings that we want to embed. This is why we've raised the need to develop this working steering group to try and make it happen. So. There's some of the things that which have been presented to us as barriers. And the next slide, then we're looking at to, you know, try and formulate response to that. So hopefully by doing things tonight, we're going to outline for the full academic year when and where those festival competi competitions will take place. So hopefully we'll be able to tick that first box for many counties tonight. In terms of competitions, we've now got festival and competition formats in place. So there's an offer for maybe your club players, your non-club players, sort of more formal and informal offer for secondary schools. So hopefully. You'll, you'll sort of appreciate that. We're looking to localise sort of competitions, so bring them to more central venues or where possible, you know, host them at school venues so they're more accessible for, for, for pupils. And we're also going to put a, an indoor and outdoor offering for secondary schools as well this year. We're also looking to work closer with clubs. So I'm only four weeks into the role, so I'm just getting around local authorities as a, as a first sort of task. My second task, then, will be looking to work with clubs to make sure that happens. So that's almost like an ongoing um, sort of action but we're looking to tick that box as well this year and then the last thing I've already mentioned about the teacher training resource so that will be done uh, certainly in time this time next year I'm hoping to embed that and it could be bespoke and tailored to each individual sort of early years primary secondary it could be one course which can be tailored adapted to suit we don't know yet so we're willing to you know go off your feedback and what, what you want for that one as an NGB though we are committed to doing these things so hopefully you tell us if we we're able to do that um, hopefully this time next year we'll have all those things in place and you'll be we'll be in a much better place in terms of school hockey going forward. So um, you may want to take a screenshot of some of this information as we progress through the slides if you're a secondary school teacher because we're going to be listing dates of when your festivals are going to be taking place. So the first thing we're going to do um, in the new year is host an indoor festival within your county for all secondary schools. So again, we're listening to the survey. We're going off the need to host an indoor festival generally in a sort of winter month when when weather's a bit more adverse so we're looking to again you know make hockey happen despite potentially the barriers which have taken place before so the indoor festival will be sort of a five-a-side format where possible in counties they have got a double sports hall we will look to book those facilities purely because 
we look to have year seven, eight, one side, year nine and ten the other, and host sort of a mass festival. Where not though, we may have to split that sport. So we're looking probably the, the bigger ones in the county to try and do that, or potentially have a morning and afternoon where we split the age groups up. That's still uh, still to be determined, and will will be determined on on sort of um, sort of demand. We will look to mix the age group and genders up. So for this, so we will have maybe three boys, two girls, or vice versa to ensure that both can play in the same team. It'll be a fun format where non-club players will be invited to play and we won't record any results. And then the games will be self-umpired or supported by young ambassadors. So as you can send, the feel of the festivals is a lot different to the competitions. It's very much about giving people the opportunity to play who may not get that opportunity within a competition environment. And again, around the environment, we would probably relax it to the point of the amount of music going on. We'll be giving out prizes. We'll have skills challenges. You know, and other things in around that to make sure that the kids have a fun experience of hockey because we're conscious that maybe on the list of priority sports it's a bit further down where we want it to be. So we're trying to escalate that up that ladder um, to try and promote a better offer. And again, following the indoor um, festivals, which again, we'll show you the dates for those in a minute's time, we're then going to run the outdoor competitions, which again will be county, regional and national. So there's still an opportunity to play in competitive hockey. We're just showing you that the first offer, which is more informal hockey, um, separate to that. So on the screen now, guys, is a list of uh, festivals for secondary schools. So as you can see, in the turn of the year, from January into February, leading up to February half term, we're going to be visiting all local authorities, all 22 across Wales, to deliver these festivals. So if you do want to take a note of when your festival will be, then that's the date we're, we're targeting to be in your county to deliver in that. Um, I've spoken to most, if most, the majority of local authorities and agreed on these dates provisionally. And the next step then will be confirm the venues and then push out more information to you in around sort of the, the, the sort of timings of this, um, et cetera. Maybe some of you may want to bring multiple teams, et cetera. So we'll work our way around those arrangements closer to the time. But that's what we're working to in terms of secondary school. So if you're in one of those now, take a screenshot, make a note uh, of when that will be, just so you've got reference of it um, for the new year. You can start to plan ahead and maybe want to, when you need to book um, a bus or you know, maybe send out letters or, or maybe get in contact with me about any questions that you may have. Steve, we'll, we'll send the PowerPoint out um, after this so people don't worry about writing too much down because you'll have the access to the PowerPoint. And we'll okay. also add it to the website as well. Okay, um, thanks, um, Bob. And do you want to take over from here, Bob? For the next few yeah, slides? just in terms of the indoor festivals, guys, for those of you who are hockey players or experienced hockey before, it's nothing like, it will be nothing like the requirements of our usual indoor, so where we normally have boards, etc. It's literally just try, about getting the kids to play and play some hockey and taking away the barrier of a facility. So that's the priority with that one. And then in terms of the actual registrations for the festivals, that will be done via the events page on our website. So I'm currently building all those. Um, and then we'll set, I'll send a link out, or Steve will send a link out over the next couple of weeks. And then you just find the, the date and venue that's convenient for you. So in terms of the in terms of the outdoor and the national competition, the traditional competition that we've had, um, based on the putting schools hockey first survey and the feedback, the ma the major change that we're having is that under 14s will move from 11 aside to seven aside. Okay, based on the number of people that we have engaged at that age group, there tends to be quite a lot. Seven aside means that you can have two matches going at one time. So instead of two teams being on the pitch, you can now have four. Um, that is likely to be replicated in, in the club uh, aspect of our game as well. So it'll be same from a secondary school and a club aspect, community aspect. Um, and the other big change is that we'll, we're no longer limiting the number of teams that um, you can enter for girls. So traditionally, we, we stipulated in our regulations, you can only enter one girls team per age group. You can now enter as many as you want. We want to get as many kids playing as possible. So we're just making changes to, to the competition's regulations now. Um, they'll be sent to um, the competition's tag for approval, um, and then they'll be added to the website. But again, we can circulate out to all secondary school contacts that we have. Um, under 12s will stay the same. So we'll have a cup and a plate for under 12s. So schools can select which one you want to go into. If you're more competitive, you've been playing for a long time, then you're more than welcome to enter the cup. If you're relatively new school to hockey, then the plate would be a great starting point for you guys just to give the kids a, a taste of what competition looks like. Um, the only queries that I've got mainly at the moment for you guys is in terms of the school's finals. So traditionally we've, al we've alternated north and south. 
So one where we have two up north and one down south. Um, and then we alternate the following year or do you want centralised? So I'd appreciate some feedback on that in terms of either by unmuting or putting some comments in the chat in terms of what you think your preference would be as a school. And then we'll go with the majority. So those are the main things in terms of uh, the outdoors. And then these are the proposed dates for the national final national finals. So I've got to work back from there in terms of what the what the other dates look like and work with some regional contacts and administrators. But those would be the dates that we're aiming for at the moment. So please, um, when you get this PowerPoint, um, please pencil those in. Um, just for information, centralised in terms of Wales would be Newtown. So that would be the most central point for for the majority um, of things that we run for hockey is at Newtown. Um, and that's it in terms of the, the national competition. So I'm leading, so I'm events manager. So I'll be supporting Steve with some of the festivals, but then I will lead on all competitions. So if you have any queries on uh, competitions or events, then please come to me. And that's it, Steve. Thanks, Bob. So there's an offer there now for secondary schools from sort of starting in January right through to, to May, potentially involved in the, in the national finals. So hopefully secondary schools there is a better offer and, Going forward, um, we will, um, next year, we've only sort of started those festivals a little bit later on in the year, purely because um, of, of sort of COVID um, awareness. So we think next September, we'll look to run the indoor festivals sort of between September and December, and then follow on with the outdoor then from sort of January onwards. So um, we've only condensed it this year slightly purely because we wanted to give ourselves sort of the maximum time just to prepare for these, these festivals in the new year. So that's secondary schools. Now I'm going to move on to primary schools. Um, so again, a, a few changes linked to this one. So um, we're looking to run your festivals um, between the months of April and May. And again, I'll outline on the, on the next slide when those festivals will be in your respective counties. So festivals will be for years three to six, um, and there'll be a, a format of five aside or seven aside, depending on, on, on sort of um, entries into festivals. So pitches will be split into thirds or six, depending on, on numbers who, 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 who sign up. To allow for maximal playing time um there'll be mixed gender again so we'll probably have three boys four girls and or vice versa in a seven aside or a two and three in a five aside and then in to ensure um you know there's a level playing field we'll sort of group schools um accordingly so if you're a small school medium school or large size school you'll be put on that relevant pitch to ensure that you know there's a sort of a level playing field certainly for some of the more rural schools maybe who maybe are put off from coming to festival because they feel they might not be able to compete um in terms of the delivery, the 4689 leaders will, will umpire. Um, we won't record any results because there's no sort of next step. Um, but nevertheless, um, that's what we're looking to achieve in terms of the actual delivery. And much like the, the secondary schools, the, the environment that we create, was hoping it's going to be a bit more sort of fun and engaging than maybe it has been previously, where we don't just, just to turn up and play. But again, we'll look to do some, some, some challenges, present some awards, some certificates, and also um, just ensure they have a more of a positive experience. So... With this, then, the plan will be uh, for secondary school, young ambassadors or sport leaders to do a, a sort of hockey leaders course in the morning on that set day. And in the afternoon, then, utilise those to facilitate the festival under my supervision in the afternoon to ensure that's a, a really positive experience as a transition activity for, for that secondary school within their respective county. So that's what we're looking to do. And those festivals will be around two hours in duration. We're aiming to start just after lunch and then finish sort of late in the afternoon to allow suitable time then for you to get back to school in terms of transport. And then what we're looking to do for those young ambassadors, if you are a secondary school teacher putting on students on this on this leadership award, is that when they go back in their individual settings, they set up either a, a primary transition club, um, they set up an extracurricular club, or they look to link with a local primary school or local club to ensure that there's a legacy impact um, to, to that delivery of that of that course and that more hockey's been delivered in those settings if, if as and where it's needed. So that's what we're looking to do for primary schools. So much like maybe you've seen before, a few minor tweaks just to ensure that more kids can play. It's more of a level playing field and hopefully they're a bit more engaged as a result. So on the next slide now, you can see the dates we're looking to do these festivals across county. Again, if you want to make a note, feel free. If not, we'll, we'll certainly share this, this, this PowerPoint, but hopefully you can see now what week commence and we're looking to do these festivals across the whole of Wales. So I'll just give you a, a moment's time just to, to make a note. Again, same principle with these guys, they'll be added to the website in our event section. And at the top, there's a, a schools tab. So if you click on schools, 
they'll take you down to all the relevant schools events. So sign up will be uh, via there. Okay. Uh, these will be outdoor. Um, these will be outdoor festivals. Again, probably host on Astro Turfs. Uh, again, hopefully central to where you're based. Um, and again, I'm in discussion with all local authorities to book these dates and venues in. So there will be a follow-up email probably in November to confirm that. And then you'll be able to sign up for, from that point onwards. Okay, and linked to that, um, the pre-engagement stuff. Um, some schools will be familiar with this, this sort of concept, the, the, the Hooked on Hockey programme that we've got. Um, Pre-COVID, it was quite successful. We were able to get reach out to a number of schools to do six weeks worth of coaching in advance of the festival with a whole school to help prepare the school for that experience. And again, local clubs were involved in that delivery or Hockey Wales staff were. We've sort of repackaged the offer this year to include a virtual and a face-to-face -face package. So I'm going to present it now to schools. And if you're interested in signing up, we're looking to launch this in the new year. So um, this is what we've put together. It'll look totally different to what you've probably experienced in the past. So we've got bronze all the way through to platinum packages. They're varying costs and obviously you get more, more, uh, more benefits that the bigger and uh, the sort of package goes. So just to give you a flavour of what some of these packages entail, the bronze, you will get an, an activity card back, uh, pack, which consists of 18 uh, session plans, which are sort of all hockey related, very much like the old school Dragon Sport cards, if you're, you're familiar with. Um, I've got lots of sort of good hockey content there. You can adapt to different age groups and abilities to deliver in your P lessons. We've got a, a mixture of different virtual sessions, which have been developed by some of our hockey coaches and hockey national team players of different skills, drills and challenges the kids can try out on, on the playground. We've also now created a primary leaders training pack. So I know some of you may have engaged in sort of bronze ambassador training, playmaker training. This is almost like a bolt on hockey version. So we're looking to create a, a pool of ambassadors in each primary school to promote hockey and not just within school, but also their local club. And they'll be tasked with um, participating in a series of hockey health and wellbeing challenges. They'll be tasked with delivering hockey on the playground promoting their, uh, their hockey club and also ensuring that you know, you're know helping to prepare some of the learners for that festival delivery um, in advance of, of the April, May date. We're also going to be sharing a display board pack. So we don't just want to be a presence on the playground. We also want to have a presence in the corridors of the school and where you may maybe have a P corner. So within that um, display board pack, I'll explain on the next slide what that consists of, but that's something new. And then again, we have, we'll have a bespoke schools membership corner on our website, which we're going to put a lot of exclusive content in. And again, you'll get free festival entry and it will be anyway um, this year to go with that. The silver package that the bolt onto that one is that you get two free spaces on our teacher training. So this year we'll continue to roll out the 4689. In the new year, though, we will bring in eventually this, this new teacher training course, which will be a hockey health and well-being course. Um, so that's again of interest. And rather than just put one person on it, we wanted to promote two in case you may have an early years and a and a, a maybe a, a junior um, teacher on that, or you might have you know, two brand new NQTs or whatever putting on that. So, or even it could be um, a playground supervisor or you know somebody who is who, involved in the, the, your sort of um, extracurricular club. So anybody who could potentially deliver hockey one on those courses to try and promote it. The gold package again, um, to two different sort of bolt ons to that. We've got a, we've got three different coach developers in Wales, and what we want to do once you've been on the train and had that, we want to make sure that you're then supported to embed some hockey in the school. So they will provide almost like a mentoring service to ensure that if you do need some light touch support post course, then that, that support's in place. And then uh, the penultimate thing is, is, the, is the club support package. So what we want to try and do is, is often it's mentioned about, well, how can we have the, the school to club link? Or what about the club to school link? And it needs to be work both ways. So what we want to make sure happen is if your club wants to increase its membership or promote something in one of your assemblies, deliver a taste today, maybe get involved with one of your national school sport week initiatives or health and wellbeing days, you have a contact and you know who that person is. So we're trying to bridge the link to ensure that happens and we'll do that, that through that, that package. And the platinum one is our, our broadest one. So as you can see, you get all the virtual benefits I've already mentioned. The only thing you've got to decide then is whether you want a hockey bag or you want six weeks of internal coaching. So you may have a specialist in your school and maybe would make do without the coaching, but if you want that instead, you're certainly welcome to. And then with regards to the hockey bag, um, it could be to re replenish or replace what you've got or just maybe if you have more people play the game, it's a, a, ultimately an option to, to, to sort of buy more. So they're the, the package that we've got um, currently. And I will be sort of launching this package probably in November time now bilingually. And if anyone is interested in signing up to it, we'll then sort of launch it from there. But then obviously the face-to-face the -face six weeks coaching won't kick in to probably after February half term in advance of that festival delivery. So 
you've got that sort of in place prior to to, to attending the festival. Um, so you're probably wondering what's what what's in some of the, these packages. So I've already explained in terms of activity cards, virtual sessions, what they are, but you will get different certificates. So if your leaders do 10 activities of leadership, 20, 30, 40, they can earn bronze to platinum certificates. Likewise, if a pupil in your school attends 10, 20, 30, 40 sessions of hockey, they can get certificates. We're also going to be doing a start of the week certificate as well as part of this package and we'll be giving stickers out as well. So there's lots of opportunity there to reward students for their participation. In terms of the primary leaders training, they will get a leader workbook, um, which will explain to them their roles and responsibilities, what activities they can do, what challenges they can do, and also act as a diary and a log so they can track their um, sort of leadership skills throughout the year. They've got a challenge checklist. So they've got some bespoke challenges through hockey and also in health and well-being to so fit the wider picture uh, linked to that. We put a session planner in there so they can plan their sessions with their teachers maybe before they go up in the yard and set up. And we've also got an attendance tracker um, so we can make a note of how many kids attend sessions in school that we can track in, over the course of an academic year. We've also got like a pupil activity log so the pupils themselves can be presented with uh, a document where they can track their own attendances and, and demonstrate there what they've learned through hockey and, and, and health and wellbeing. And then lastly, we've got a school impact report where the leaders and the teachers come together to write at the end of an academic year what impact the programmes had on their school, their pupils and their overall health and wellbeing. So that'll be really interesting to note because we wanted to know that and explain why in a, in a moment's time. And display board, you're probably wondering what will go on this notice board. Well, first of all, we want to promote who your local club is. So all the contact details of them. And again, you'll get templates for all of these. We want to make sure that the, leader, the leaders who are on the Hooked on Hockey leadership team are known. So there'll be a picture on there as well as a profile of who they are. We want to know the start of the week is in the school, so people are aware of if someone's took part in the session and done something particularly well, they're, they're showcased. There'll be a timetable of activities, your school pledge, so what you want to commit to this year. Is it just hooked on hockey internally as well as attending a festival, or do you want to engage with your local club? Do you want to put more teachers on training? That's bespoke to you. And then ultimately, we want to, it's a partnership between us and you to make that happen. So that's what you'll get in terms of templates for that. And then lastly, um, teacher CPD is a, is a big passion of mine. And I think through the survey, it was, it, was, it was evident that probably you need to be supported more and you're looking for more CPD, which is great for us to hear. So through this package, you'll get the 4689 course. You'll get that coach developer support and that mentoring post course. You'll have that closer links to clubs. We're going to have a designated page on the website for schools. So within that, we're looking to push out um, resources, webinars, case studies, put you know, festival updates on there, as well as other things that you may want. Um, if you tell us what you want, we'll, we'll try and serve it. Um, so that there's a lot more resource for, for, for teachers to sort of sort of pick from. And then naturally, then you've got multiple CPD routes, whether that's sort of online or face to face. And through the development of that new hockey health and wellbeing course, hopefully you'll be better prepared then to deliver hockey as part of this new curriculum. So we're hoping now you've got a vast variety of resource, a vast variety of CPD opportunities and training to go with that to enable you and your school and your pupils to play more of the sport to ensure that you know we're hitting some of our targets and try and reverse that trend of participation from primary leading into it into a secondary wave. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, there's a lot there that we've got through. I imagine that you've got plenty of questions and appreciate you listening to me waffle on for the best part of 35 minutes. Um, and again, um, I'm, you know, what I'd like to do, I haven't really kept track of the chat function. I know Bob's been in charge of that, but if you have got any questions now, guys, and even if there's multiple and they're really bespoke to you as an individual or as an individual school, just pop them in the chat function now because we're going to create an FAQ document to answer all of these questions. Or if you leave your name and your individual email in that in that chat function, I've got something really specific. I will follow up with you separately. So um, we want to prioritise the people on the call here because you've you've been on the training and I can respond to you probably first because you you're here and now. Um, and then as well as giving your questions on the chat function. We also want to collect some feedback from you as well. So we'll explain how to do that on the next slides. So before we do, um, I just want to share with you my key contacts, as well as uh, Amanda, who's on the call. So anything school and community related. So by all means, that school and club related, really. And my email address is on the screen, as is my mobile number. So reach out to me whenever you need to, um, to ask any questions or touch base or anything that we discussed tonight. Um, you know, we're available sort of... Um, you know, normal office hours and, and above and beyond that if, if needs be and then Bob's is anything sort of uh, competitions wise so if you've got want to give feedback around that 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 thing the questions you mentioned before around where to host that that sort of um, national schools finals and 
reach out to her. And what we'd like to do more um, networking on is, is our social media pages. So we have got a Twitter and Instagram and a Facebook. Certainly Twitter is one I'm sort of big on. So if you can even tweet some feedback about tonight's webinar, give us some thoughts, give us your feedback. Go on to Twitter, tag us in at Hockey Wales. We're really responsive on there. We will try and um, promote what you're doing in school as well. So if you, you are going to wear red for Wales on that 21st of October or you are going to sign up to Hooked on Hockey or your teachers are committing to do um, do some teacher training, well, tell us about it because we're really keen on that. And what we are doing this year, I should have mentioned on the previous slide, is we're actually going to try and embed Hooked on Hockey into our national awards this year. So we're going to give out some schools awards for school of the year, teacher of the year, students of the year. So we want to hear about it. And if we don't know about it, chances are we can't throw you in the mix for those things. So tell us all about the good that you're doing and we'll, we'll definitely showcase it and certainly will on our schools corner because that's the area where schools will go on and look for that good practice and want to share that as wide as possible because that's a, the, probably the best resource and, and place to do those, those type of things. So uh, I'll probably hand you back over to Bob's now because he's a bit more um, technologically advanced than I am. So just about the feedback, Bob. Um, yeah, guys, just an opportunity. So what we're trying to do is offer different ways of engaging people, so webinars in person, et cetera. Um, so please, could you spare a couple of minutes now to either scan that QR code if you're not on your phone um, or type that link into, into the chat function um, and then just give us a little bit of feedback in terms of your thoughts on this webinar. Um, because what we'd like to do moving forward is as opposed to send um, emails out, which don't give much rationale or clarification around things or contacts, is to actually do things a bit more in person. Um, I've just put the code in, in the chat now for everyone. I'm hoping to put it in right. Um, but so to do things live and then people can ask questions there and then should they need to be. Um, so please spare some time to do that. Sean, yes, it has been recorded. Apologies, I did accept you in. I didn't leave you out there. Uh, but for some reason, we had some technical issues with you, but it'll be added to the school's corner. So after today, when we send the presentation out, we'll also send you the link to the school's corner of our website, along with a password for the page. So it's password protected just so we can engage people who are engaging with us. And then, Ab, you put quite, um, quite a relevant question in, so I'm hoping I've answered some of it. Um, but I think we'll probably uh, provide a lot more context after that we've met as a competitions tag in November. Um, so when we go out publicly with the changes that we provide the context around it and hopefully the benefits of the changes we'll have. Um, and the last thing is Bob's um, is, is the school's corner. Okay. So this one will take you to School's Corner now. I'm gonna put the password in. Uh, I'm hoping this password's right now. I'm just gonna double check. So again, either by using this, the code, um, by scanning the QR code or using the link at the bottom, it'll take you to the School's Corner. Password I put in is right. So that will give you access to the World Cup qualifier stuff that Steve talked about. So you can download it. There's a little bit on funding. There's some member benefits packages um, and ignore the learning series at the bottom because we'll be adding the school as well into that. So at the moment, guys, that, that resource is quite scarce, but um, it's our job now to keep um, uploading resource onto there. And the more you access, the more you'll see. And we'll certainly share that wider as we go but um you're looking at your resource webinars information around what we're looking to do will be placed on there so keep an eye out you've got the password now and then, like i said the first thing you can access there is the downloadable world cup resources so with that being a thing that's sort of most upcoming and most urgent then then, then download the share amongst your, your classes and tell us about what you've what you're going to be doing that week with your pupils um around it to, to engage the pupils So that is it. Um, feel free again to, to post your questions in the chat function. We are going to save the chat function. And those are the questions that we will respond to in the FAQ, as well as others that may, may get asked um, sort of post-webinar. So um, before you go, guys, if you do want to ask any questions, put them in there. I'm happy to stay on the call as well for, for, for a little while longer if anyone wants to ask any sort of uh, questions direct. Um, but other than that, you, you feel, uh, feel free to, to leave the call. Like I say, just... Um, 
look out for some emails over the next couple of weeks and months around some more information about what we discussed tonight. But thank you for your uh, your time tonight. Um, I look forward to working with you uh, in in hockey capacity um, during this during this academic year. Thank you. Hi, Steve. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. It's Jane Hempage from Whitchurch. Hi. Hi, Jane. Hi. Yeah. Um, I just got a question about um, if you do any umpiring courses for the senior girls, older kids that could. I'm trying to get them involved in my younger ones and coming out and umpiring and coaching, and it would be nice for them to come away with some sort of qualification for they're going off to university next year. So, Bob's, can I direct this one to you? Yeah, so Jane, we've got the level one umpire, which is a formal qualification across England and Wales, but you have yeah. to be 16 or over to, to do the level one. So what sort of age range are you looking? Well, these are year 13s. Okay, so they'll be old enough. So I'd yeah. probably recommend doing a level one. So the theory... I haven't, I haven't like, asked them yet, mine, but they're, they're coming out. To, they're coming out. <laughs> they, they may like you or they may not like you after this. <laughs> well, they're, co they're coming out, like tomorrow, I've got, I've got a game with, the, with my year nines, one of my... You, I don't know if you know Poppy Riley, do you? Um, yes. Poppy's going to come out. So I just think if they're starting to do some work with the kids, it would be nice to get them a qualification as well so they actually come away with something, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, definitely then I'd probably recommend the level one umpire um, yeah. because, you know, you can do that from 16. Um, it's it's the theory online. So there's three one and a half hour sessions of theory. So, I mean, we could either come into a school and do it all in a day if we can get tutors available to do it, um, or we can split it over so they do a, um, a bit of extra curriculum every evening. Um, and then there's a little bit of practical they do. And there's an assessment that's required, though, for the level one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't have to do that straight away. So they've got a year to practice and, and, yeah. and apply for assessment. Yeah, I wouldn't mind looking into it because they, they have days where they don't have lessons, so they're... You know, they, okay. it's like a Wednesday afternoon, they don't have lessons. So, yeah, I mean, we can certainly look into that for you. Yeah, uh, if I give the information to Steve, um, Steve can Steve can bounce that on to you then, and you you guys can have a conversation in terms of what you think's best for the for the kids. Yeah, I mean, they might they, they might not be interested, but I thought I may as well ask while I'm I'm here and have a chat with them tomorrow and see if they would it was something that they would go for. I can't see why they wouldn't if it's how much is how much does it cost? You know. It's 60, 60 pound per person or 65 pound per person. So um, it's because it's a formal qualification. They can go out and umpire um, yeah. senior hockey. Um, there is another one which is called an introduction to umpiring. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's that's very much similar to the 4689. So it's leadership. Um, yeah. And that will allow you to umpire small sided games um, and youth hockey. So you could do that for your older ones to actually umpire the under 12s and under 14s competitions, for example. Yeah, OK. So okay. there's two, but I'll, I'll, accept, I'll give the information to Steve because he won't have it all, bless him. Um, and then um, Steve can engage you in that in terms of what you what you think's best for the school. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jane. Right. Jane, that might be something. That might be something if, you know, if you had a couple, perhaps... Oh, um, we could join together. Hi, this is Penny at Lanishan. Um, yeah. You know, maybe if you if you've got a couple, I might be able to get a couple. If there was an, I don't, how many do you need, Amanda, to run a? We tend to, to stay six to to make it viable to run it online, and then in terms of the practical stuff, yeah. that's not really an issue because they could probably do it in school with you doing yeah. a hockey session where they could practice their umpiring. Okay. Well, so, I think uh, yeah. between a lot of us, Penny, we probably could. Easily get six, can we? With other, yeah, and you I would have thought so. Yeah. yeah, being really hopeful, twelve yeah. is the maximum for online learning. Okay. Any more than that, we don't particularly like to do it because we don't find the engagement is as high. Yeah. The more numbers you have. Okay, we'll have a think about that then, and I'll have a chat with I'll have a chat with you, Penny. Separately okay. then. Yeah. yeah okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Um, is Nathan still on? Nathan asked a question. Steve, I think he's gone. Yeah, I, I know him personally, so I, I can follow up separately with him. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, okay, just another minute then, see if anyone else has got any questions, Steve, and then um, yeah. I'll end the call.
Okay. That's it then, Bob's. Yeah. Um, you can stop sharing now if you want. Is it still being recorded? Yes.